Hi, I'm Luke Sierveld. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Today, we're going to talk about a provocative project that was uh, put together in part by the two folks that I have uh, with me. I've got Annie Spiegelman and Liz Sale. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for having us. Hi. Annie Spiegelman is an AD, has been an AD, assistant director uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area for many years. Uh, we go back more than 30 years uh, together mm. on, on projects. <laughs> Don't calculate that. <laughs> And, and Liz Sale is a producer, a writer, and comedian, and has been in the Bay Area for many years as well, uh, and beyond, and now located in the LA area. Looking forward to speaking about your project. Uh, I thought we'd uh, play it first, and then we'll come back and discuss. Howdy, neighbor. Oh, hey. Come on over. Okay. <laughs> Have a seat. Stop. So, do you do the sex? Hell yeah. yeah. Play in the field? Uh huh. Using protection? Yeah, mostly. Really? You gonna look me in my eyes and tell me you don't sometimes play condom? Get your head out of the clouds. <laughs> okay, man. Who, who are you anyway? I am Dr. Jolly, and I am here to give you. A baby. Oh, cute. Uh, 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 uh. First, you got to give me 17 grand. What? Because that's how much it costs on average to raise a precious little baby for one year. I the cute little baby. Isn't he the cutest little squidgy boo boo boo? All right, let me check my calculator. Oh, well, yeah, of course, got to add that in. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, what? Depending where you live, you could spend up to $310,605 before the kid's even 18. What? Mm -hmm. You got two choices, champ. One, you can bring some protection along with your A-game on your next date, or you can come on in and unzip for the snip. Wait, you're doing vasectomies in my stepmom's yoga shed? It was her idea. How do moms know all these things? Mystery of the ages. She knows that abortion is not just a medical issue. It's an economic issue. So she graciously turned her sanctuary into a surgery. Namaste. <laughs> oh, oh, right now? Yeah. Wait, wait, are you, are you even a doctor? <gasps> the best doctor this side of the tracks. So, if you're not ready to raise a beautiful, precious crybaby right now, I get it. Enjoy your freedom, man. Save your money and stock up on some sleep. There's plenty of time for you to be an exemplary parent later on. Today, let's save you. Let's save me. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, froggy scissors. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. You doing okay, kid? <laughs> You're the best, Dr. Jolly. Thank you, I acknowledge your existence as well. <gasps> oh, is that a butterfly? I gave you way too much Percocet. Another satisfied customer. Oh, uh, hey, can you leave me a review on Tic Tac? Are you registered to vote? Vote! You can take my love to the bank. You can take my love to the bank. You can take my love to the bank. If you need some reassurance. If you need to be reassured. If you need some reassurance. You can take my love to the bank. You can take my love to the bank. You can take my love to the bank.
So fun. Pretty, pretty fun. <laughs> fun. <laughs> the thing I love is, you know, using humor for a serious topic. And, and obviously, you, know, that you can go into it and go, well, you know, uh, abortion and vasectomy, that's two different things. You know, you, if you said tube tides, you know, with vasectomy or abortion plus, oh, we don't have anything there. You know, it's like, so it's, it's like this sort of violence against society perpetrated on mostly women. Uh, and, and then how do you come back from that? Well, it's, it's a societal thing. It's not just a women thing. And, and how can we, uh, uh, it's, it's sort of like Black Lives Matter. It's like, it's not an all lives matter thing. It's a like, let's talk about black lives because they've been, you know, uh, uh, put in a situation that's untenable. And so right. yep. then you say, let's talk about vasectomies because that will jumpstart this conversation and make it an important thing for men to talk about. So it's like, I love it. I love what you're doing and, and, and how you're, you're, you're just uh, bringing that humor in and uh, uh, it's actually a really good vibe because oh, it's you. a positive thing. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, Luke, my dad is 94 years old. I told him, he didn't see it yet, but I will show it to him, but he read the script and we we're talking about it. And the first time he heard it, we we're sitting having coffee and he said, yeah, vasectomies, why isn't anybody talking about vasectomies? He's a 94 year old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I can out myself. I've had a vasectomy, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it, it was the least I could do. You know, my wife did all, all the work in, in so many other ways. It's like, come on, uh, you know, be a, be a man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know that I don't have the numbers, but I know since 2022 that the uh, vasectomy rates have gone up. I don't mm -hmm. remember what the number is. Um, and that's good. As long you know, we just want a contraception conversation, whatever it is, everybody be a little more responsible. Yeah. And let's slow, slow down the sperm. Stop spreading it all over. And by the way, a vasectomy doesn't stop any future pleasure having. Like men, you're still high functioning. Like really there's no, I mean, except for not having children unless you want to adopt, it's all benefits. <laughs> so just gonna pull that plug. <laughs> I still have a smile on my face. I know, see, there's benefits. Wait, here's like, you don't an interesting anything. fact that during March Madness, the amount of vasectomies go up because I guess people go get it done, which is 15 minutes and an ice pack. And then you go home and rest for a couple of days. So they're watching March the Madness and they're happy. They're on the couch. There you go. See, Enough you know, said. The benefits continue. <laughs> yep. No, this is the, uh, the type of subject matter that people who watch this channel are looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's this is for the men. This is for the men too. We're helping them. We love them. We love it'll them. make you, them. it'll make you lighter on your feet. Yeah. See, I got the lighting in there. Yeah, yeah. So, Ooh, very good. So, so now, Annie, you have yep. um, uh, a little clinic in your backyard. <laughs> no, that actually is my yoga shed. I'm doing my morning yoga in there. So, um. Also, I don't know if these younger men know that in the 1960s, women would go, they're called back alley abortions, and you'd go and get an illegal abortion. And some doctors were good doctors, and they were getting arrested, and some were not so good, and they were, women were getting sick after a so-called abortion. So part of that is just having a back, backyard vasectomy. That's kind of how I wanted to mm -hmm. see for men to see kind of what women had gone through, but make ours a little more joke, jokey joke. I'm wondering if uh, if you could, Annie, if you could sort of um, tell us what's the backstory of this project? Where where did it come from? Sure. Okay. First of all, um, I brought the bell. I thought if, <laughs> if we get too serious during this, I'm gonna ring the bell. Okay, it's a tough topic. Um, so a little back history. Um, in wonderful America in 1910, 
the legislators, mostly male, white male, decided to ban abortion nationally. Then a lot of younger viewers may not know this, uh, but in 1973, there was a Supreme Court case to legalize abortion again nationally. Then the more conservative Supreme Court that we had during the Trump era in 2022, a Dobbs Supreme Court case banned it again and just gave power to the states. So now abortion in 21 states in America is banned or uh, severely restricted abortion access. So that was in 22. So many women around the world and here in America just were filled, we call it Roe rage because uh, Roe versus Wade was reversed. And so this would happen to be around the same time that the film writers union went on strike. So many of us were home and unemployed for a while and we had more time on our hands. So I said, mm, well, we might as well write something. I'm not doing anything. So I wrote a, a really bad script um, based on a character in New York, Crazy Eddie. I don't know if you guys know about him, but he used to sell TVs in New York in the 1970s and 80s when I was younger and just trashy and just just like hot sales in your face yelling at you. And that was the idea for this character. I thought, well, what if this doctor or so-called doctor was yelling at guys to go get a vasectomy, but I also wanted to be funny and not just be about vasectomy, but also just have an awareness about contraception that it's men and women, you know, to two people involved here. So bad script, but then I found Gina Bardi, a comedy writer who's married to Ty Bardi. I don't know if you've ever worked with Ty, a director here. I called her and I said, you know, I have no money. We're doing, I'm just getting a volunteer crew. And before I could finish my sentence, she was like, just send me the script, I'm in. So, just from just saying it's a pro-choice PSA. And um, so we worked together briefly and she just made it so much. She added the younger character in and she toned down the anger and made it funny and loving. And once I had the script that I really loved, I started contacting friends, uh, producer, art director, and uh, Liz to come on and be a post-production supervisor but there were some changes when we went out to shoot and thank God she came up early from LA and helped us out. <laughs> yes. All right. So that That's... was how it all started. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Genesis. And then uh, yes. when you came into it, Liz, where was it? Well, I mean, I, I, Andy, Andy's kind of underselling herself. She's a spark plug. I mean, uh, in addition to the fact that we were all, you know, in Los Angeles as well, all the strikes were happening. The combination of wanting to work and also work on important projects, but there, you know, the, the sort of ripple effect of of um, the the Dobbs decision. Uh, it wasn't just women; it was men too. I just feel like we're we're in a time where everybody wants access to decent health care, and everybody wants access to support for families and for life choices, and so. I just felt like it was a no-brainer. I mean, she sent me the script. It was hilarious. I was so, it, I loved it. And I also loved that there's an educational aspect behind it that really it's, again, it's not just about women, it's about men too. And it's about the impact of choice on a family decision or a, a life decision or a dire um, life decision in a lot of cases for certain women, um, abortion is required to save their lives for various reasons. So it's not just about choice of having children. It's also around having access to decent health care for saving humans. So anyway, it was a no brainer. And I've worked with Annie for years in the Bay Area and um, she had assembled an amazing team already. And I said, just tell me where to go. I'll be there. So I came in kind of um, it's sort of the pre pro stage a couple weeks before the shoot and just jumped in and helped with line producing and, you know, it was really fun. It was the start of this year, so we were all really excited. We're like, "Yay, let's do yeah. this!" Yeah. <laughs> and now the, the entire production crew team was women, right? Yes. I just wanted to feel. I'd never been on a set with an all women crew, and I just said, "Hey, it's my. We're shooting in, in my backyard. I'm going to do it." <laughs> and I thought, been very lucky in my career, and a lot of the crew were younger women, and I wanted them to, to move up and get their names out there. So that was part of it. But part of it also was 
we all needed some way to vent to, to get out our anger and and by doing something funny it just was very cathartic for all of us so then just in terms of the production day any hurdles and any, any things that came yes. up like difficulties yeah. you had to get over well, um, I want to go back a little bit to the Tech Scout day, which was a week before. And um, wonderful Christina Williams, our DP, she came out to my house about a month before. And I showed her the script and we went into the shed where we shot. And I don't think you were there, Liz, yet. She was there with Bronna Stone, the wonderful art director. And we were going to film, in my mind, we were filming inside the shed. And I had a desk all set up and it was going to be like, Never call Saul or whatever the better, Saul's better, office. Better, better call Saul. Saul. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And so I had that in my mind. And wonderful Christina said, "No, this is so boring inside here." She goes, "We have to shoot the whole thing outside and and make it a little bit Wes Anderson style." And I just take so grateful to her. And then art director Bronna Stone came up with the whole the underpants on the on the laundry line and the the shade coming down with the scissors. It was just such a collaborative, wonderful team of talented people. So I'm so grateful. No, that's oh, awesome. So, um, so actually, so a few days before the shoot, there was a week of rain. So I thought, oh my God, it's going to rain on this Sunday that we had planned. And here, you know, and then COVID, COVID's always coming around, it seems like. And there was COVID coming back. Um, one of our, our camera assistants did have to be replaced because of COVID. And then um, Lisa Tasson, our wonderful producer, um, her mom, we knew this was happening, but her mom actually passed away just a few days wow. before the shoot, sadly. And she came to the set on the shoot day, and so did Laura Tassone, who did Makeup and Wardrobe. Those two are heroes. And they said, you know, their mom was a big feminist, and mom would want them there. Um, yeah. Liz was helpful in that way, too, because I didn't know if I was losing my producer. And um, Liz was by my side the whole time. Just uh, she was doing script too, but she was doing it all. Uh, but her being a comedian, too, I just had such help with, you know, if something wasn't funny. She just knew the timing and she'd give me, give me the elbow and say, she whispered, do it this way. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> oh, I love it. And, and when you approached it, did you have it all, you know, shot listed and storyboarded and all that kind of stuff? Or were you more kind of going with your gut? No, it was Lisa and Liz made me do everything. They gave me all this homework to do, storyboard, shot list. They were like, we are not letting a first time director on set without all this. And I'm so glad that I did because uh, there were moments it was when we were doing certain takes over and over. And then we had some sound issues because my neighborhood, everybody seemed to be, it was a Sunday, everybody's working on their lawns yeah. and uh, lots of airplanes. You never notice all the airplanes when you live there and all of a sudden uh, when you're shooting there, it, it seemed like every minute. Claudia sound did an amazing job too. The reason we gave yeah. Annie the directive to do a shot list and, you know, boards was we really, she's a brilliant AD, as we all know, we've all worked with her for years. And when we're leaning into a new role, especially women, we tend to fall back into our caretaking mode. And I really wanted to empower her with being a director. I really wanted her to focus on working with the actors and looking at the shots and working just with the DP. So I was, I really pushed her. I was like, I don't want you thinking about airplanes or shoot. crap service. Like this is the, this was the great thing about this shoot was like, Annie really allowed us to sort of step into roles that we might traditionally not. And because it was mostly women, I mean, there were some wonderful male allies who came, I'll let Annie talk to that. But like, it was really amazing just this collaboration of we're going to, we're all in this together. We're, we're doing something that is important and funny. It's also very important for me as a producer, been producing for years to create like a really good vibe on set. I want people to feel, you know, comfortable and relaxed and cared for. And so we, we sort of struck this balance between um, running it very strictly like a classic film shoot. We took it very seriously. We, we, we you know, we, we had a shot list, we had a schedule, we had, you know, all the, the timing planned out, but we also wanted there to be room for collaborative ideas. And so Annie was also really great about like, okay, I've got what I want in the can. Do you guys have some ideas? And of course me and Elisa were 
you know, both directors also. And, and we're like, yes, let's shoot a couple more things. So, <laughs> but because we had a really great structure and because we empowered Annie with the director hat, mm -hmm. she was generous and let us kind of chime in, you know, because I know it's tricky when you invite other opinions. And so we really tried to mm -hmm. give everybody space to do that. So it was a it was a high functioning, but also very collaborative environment, which I'm really proud of. I'm going to add one other thing to that. Also about prep, Dave Leon, who played Dr. Jolly, the actor, and Ben Ellie, who plays Tyler, the young man. I didn't know Dave Leon. I just was calling friends of friends and found him. He's a theater actor in the South Bay. And we only did one rehearsal about a week before. And I'm so, so impressed how he pulled this together, found the character, just added to it. And then Ben Ellie, the younger man who played Tyler, Ben Ellie is also a producer, director, editor, and he's also an actor, another talented person. I'm just so grateful to both of them because the first, when I sent them the script about a month before, and I said, hey, what are you doing on this Sunday? Any chance you want to, and we do a rehearsal a week before, and they both jumped at it. I got to say, the men that came, uh, Neil Kelly came with his grip electric truck in the morning and just delivered it for us and then picked it up later. I mean, <laughs> there was so much love with this project. People were just, um, Jimmy Dunn lent us the camera, WTBR, we got to rehearse at their uh, production office a week before. They weren't even there. They gave me the key to their office. I mean, there was a lot of love with this project and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. very grateful. That's fantastic. And also, um, besides the wonderful script, then came in Molly Lynch, our editor, who made magic out of this. I guess getting back to the topic a bit. Um, oh, yeah. oh, yes. Now, this is mostly a, a get out the vote uh, yeah. piece. And, and um, yes. where is it being shown? So it's on YouTube right now. And I think we're up to about a thousand views, which is to me, that seems like a lot, but I know it's not. So my hope is that some younger people will find it and post it because I'm above the age of TikTok, so I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> so I'd love it to go over to TikTok. I have it on other social media, on YouTube, especially younger people and maybe some guys that like it might want to share it. I would be so grateful. We, I got to tell you, though, about a week ago, we did have... The actor John Lithgow, who I've worked with a couple of times, he actually posted on Twitter. So that that was that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. John, wow, he's a good guy. Good guy. My ask or inspiration or motivation for this film too was to have people. I think what's going to save us in this election is the grassroots organizations that are making calls to uh, to voters, to mostly Democrats and independent vote pro-choice voters making calls, uh, knocking on doors, writing postcards, uh, sending texts to younger voters. And there's these groups called indivisible.org and they're all over the country and you can join wherever you are. A lot of the work is done remotely. And that's what's saving us. That's what had us win in the midterm elections. You know, it's this secret card behind all the scenes. It's all these volunteers. And so I'd like to get more, I, I see a lot of women volunteering. I'd like to get more men in there too. Well, this is fantastic. Thanks so much. You've kind of already sort of laid out some of uh, the action items people can uh, bail themselves of for voting. I mean, just voting period is the upshot here, right? Exactly. There's a lot of states now that want to make it really hard for voters. And so mm -hmm. some of these states, you should look where you go to Blue Voter Guide, put in your zip code, see what ID you need to get to vote. But some of these states now won't accept student ID or a driver's license. They're saying you need a passport or your birth certificate. And a lot of young mm. people don't have a passport or a birth certificate. They have school ID or maybe a driver's license. And older people may not have access to their ID. And people maybe who don't drive and can't get access to their ID, the specific ID. So there's a group called VoteRiders.org, R-I-D-E-R-S. And you can go onto their website and they will help you to get the correct ID that you need in your state. And when you go to vote, you should bring your proof of vasectomy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I also yeah. want to do a shout out to all the partners and allies and husbands who helped make this too. Um, Annie's sweet husband was doing all the craft service behind the scenes. And we, we had a lot of very supportive men behind the project too, all both our husbands as well as 
many others. So yeah. again, we're here to help the men too. This is not just a, a women's issue. I want to thank Chris Forrest from doing the, doing the sound mix, and I want to thank Ayumi and the team in New York who did the color. Yeah, everybody pitched in, and it was a, a it was an incredible. Thank you to everybody involved. It was a love project. Yes. Keep spreading the love. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time. And I have such respect for someone who's morally against abortion, but right. I think my, my message is mind your own business. Let's everybody mind, I'll Twice. mind my business, you mind your business, you know? Yeah. Choice. You don't, they don't have to have an abortion. Right. I just also want to mention, because I just saw this, uh, Liz Winstead, who uh, was the, one of the starters of The Daily Show years ago, but she mm -hmm. has a documentary out that's called No One Asked You. So keep an eye out for it. And it's fantastic. There's a bunch of comedians that traveled around America mm -hmm. looking to um, abortion clinics and seeing the the bad and the good, um, but they they tried to make it a little light and it's it's a great documentary. So I just mm -hmm. and I just saw the name. No one asked you. Well, that's that says it all.